Good morning everyone! Hi, how's everybody doing? This is my first ever mukbang video. I'm eating my very favorite meal in the world. It's breakfast. Um, grab a cup of coffee, get your healthy breakfast, let's, let's eat together and chat about the day. I have been known to eat this very same meal for lunch and dinner and in the same day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, same meal three times. Basically fruit salad, obviously with whatever fruit you have in the house. Today I have some watermelon in here, some cantaloupe, and some mango. Uh, Aldi has just an amazing price this week on mangoes, 59 cents each, and they're big, huge mangoes. I've never gotten a mango for 59 cents, and mangoes are my very, very absolute favorite food in the whole wide world. You know how, you know, they're sweet and they're delicious and they're perfection, but they kind of taste the way turpentine smells. Have you ever noticed that? Is that weird? Is that just me? And I love that. There's just something about that I love. Like I was that kid who when um, their parents went to the gas station to, to fill up the car with gas, like I'd be the kid in the back seat like smelling the gas fumes and I just loved that smell. That was back, that was back in the day before the whole filling your gas system was like an enclosed system. This was back when there were like major fumes floating around gas stations. I'm not advocating, you know, like huffing and using inhalants to get high. I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying, I like the smell of gas and I like the smell of turpentine. And I like mangoes because they remind me of turpentine. I don't know. It's weird. So anyway, we have this fabulous fruit salad. Isn't it colorful and pretty? And it's even in this fancy clear Tupperware type container so you can see and then on top of the fruit, under the beautiful uh, yogurt, the vanilla yogurt that was free with a coupon, I've got um, beep, 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 uh, broken up walnuts, maybe about 50 cents worth of walnuts, and then I have two crushed up granola bars. That, that would be a quarter worth of granola bars. So that's a, not the, well, that's a pretty frugal breakfast. Not the most frugal. Oatmeal probably would have been more frugal, but... You know, it's fruit. It's fresh fruit. I love it. It's good for you. It's healthy. There's no need to to go out and have a donut or a bagel. Waste money on mm, bad, bad empty calories. No, 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 no. Oh, no. So, let's have a bite. I'm very hungry. In fact, I have a little bit of a headache because that's how hungry I am. All right, so we have a little bit of yogurt. We have a little chunk of mango. Oh, yum, yum. Oh, and look at the spoon I'm using. Mm-hmm. That's like a toddler spoon. It's got a little picture of some fruit on the handle. That's appropriate because all our spoons are in the dishwasher. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. That is good mango. My older daughter cut into the mango yesterday and it wasn't really ripe enough. So she comes to me with this mango with this chunk cut out of it and she goes, um, it wasn't really ripe enough. I'm going to put it in the fridge. And I said, you know, it's not going to get any riper now. Like, you've ruined everything. You've destroyed it. It's not going to ripen more in the fridge. I was very upset. I didn't show it. I didn't show the tears and the sadness of the, about the mango. But, you know, it's my favorite food. We don't be wasting mangoes. But anyway, I took that mango out of the fridge this morning, and I just said, well, whatever. Even if it's not ripe, I'm just going to go ahead and eat this mango. It's not going to be the best in the world. It's going to be hard as a rock. Whatever. But it's actually not bad at all. It's soft enough. It's not super juicy, but it does have some of its delightful mango flavor, so I'm okay with it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Ah, now look at this bite. Oh, look how colorful. We've got the beautiful yellowy orange of the mango, and we have the red of the watermelon. Um. Mm. I should have grabbed some napkins. I am the type of person to dump this entire thing in my lap. I'm hoping that won't happen, but I am that type. My husband can't understand why I'm such a spiller. He claims that he never spills anything. And he thinks it's so weird that I spill. And I tell him, everybody spills, that's normal. And he's like, no, that's not normal, that's just you. And I'm saying, no, you're not normal in your weirdo claims that you're a non-spiller, that's not normal. You are not normal. 
I think everybody spills. Though my mother also will say that I'm careless. So she'd be on my husband's side in this way. But let me tell you, my husband and my mother, disturbingly the same person. Very weird. It's very, very weird. I did not realize this about him in the beginning. He's just like my crazy mother. Don't marry your mother. Especially when you're marrying a man. Unless your mother's really cool. One word I would not use to describe my mother is cool. She's a lot of things, but she's not cool. I'm cool. I tell my, my grown daughter this all the time, like what a super cool mom I am. And she, she doesn't buy it, amazingly enough. She disagrees. I think her words for me would be more kind of along the lines of sad and pathetic. I'm freaking fun. She's so lucky to have me. Please. Mm. Now, with this particular concoction, juiciness is critical. Particularly when you're using Greek yogurt, because you know how thick it is? I'm not saying the yogurt is dry, per se, because it is on the liquid side of things, you know, being that it's yogurt, but it's, you know how thick Greek yogurt is, it's not um, watery, shall we say. And I think one of the reasons I love this is because I'm chronically dehydrated and I'm drawn to fruit because of all the juice in it. Because God forbid I get myself to drink a glass of water. Why is that so hard? So it's very important to have fruit that's juicy in here um, to help, to help um, kind of make the yogurt a little bit more liquidy and help the yogurt spread. Because it's also very important that every bite represents each of the things in here. You don't just want a bite of watermelon and then a bite of fruit. I mean, a bite of yogurt. Yeah, that made sense. You don't just want like a bite of watermelon or mango, then a bite of fruit, then a chunk of granola. No, 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 no. I'm saying every bite has to have a mixture of all these things. Everything has to stay in proportion. You don't just eat the yogurt off the top. That would be that would be so screwed up. Why would you do that? So you need the juiciness of the fruit to help kind of spread the yogurt out, is what I'm saying. And I have the juiciness of the watermelon in here, but usually, because watermelon is not really a staple in my household. It is kind of at this time of year. We love the watermelon, but canned pineapple. That's what is very critical generally for this concoction because it's juicy. And um, you can often get it with coupons. The Dole pineapple often has a coupon available. The pineapple I just got today was at Aldi, and that was, I believe, 89 cents a can, which is a pretty good price. You know, it's interesting when you get your canned stuff at Aldi, it's like the old-fashioned cans where you actually have to get your can opener out to open it. It doesn't have, like, the little pop top. So think of the, the extra money you're paying for the pop top. You can get the cheaper product at Aldi with the old-fashioned can, and you have to go to all that trouble to open the can rather than the convenience of the pop top. I think I'm just going to go for cheap and use my, use my can opener. Mm. This is so good. So yummy. I used to hate watermelon when I was a kid. I didn't like it at all. Too watery, too sticky, too juicy, too messy. And the flavor wasn't worth it all. I just didn't like it. But now I love it. I'd say maybe in the past three years. So your tastes can change as you mature. As you shift from being a child to an older middle-aged woman in her 50s. Yes, things might change along the way. Very often there will be banana in this. Because bananas are probably the cheapest fruit that you have to pay for. I mean, if you have apples you can go pick for free. That would be cheaper. But I didn't put banana in today because the mango was so large. Does this look like a really large container? I kind of feel like by a normal person's standard this might be kind of like enough fruit salad for several people. And I don't know if you're thinking, wow, is she going to really eat that whole thing herself? Yes, I am. I could eat twice this in a sitting. I think I got so into the, the fruit salad 
with yogurt kind of combo. And I was pregnant with my older daughter, so that's 20 years ago. And I would make, I would take like the biggest mixing bowl I had, and I would make a giant fruit salad. I lived in California at the time. Um, which, you know, no offense to Californians, but I just hated it. I was miserable out there. Just, I just didn't like it. L.A. is a weird freaking place. I think especially if you grow up in the Northeast. I don't know. It's just weird. You think you're going to love the weather. Oh, it's warm and sunny all day. But the seasons don't change. You kind of have this little bit of rain in the winter when, and so things kind of get green. And then the rest of the year, it's like dead brown grass on the hills. Um, you got the palm trees. I mean, it's like good for vacation when you want to go somewhere warm and sunny and tropical. But then again, if you're on the East Coast, just go to Florida. Don't freaking go all the way to California. Um, but it's so bizarre to, to not have the change of seasons. Like, you know in the fall, if you're from the Northeast or anywhere where there's a fall, and the, the leaves fall from the trees, and you're walking along the sidewalk, and you get that, like, crunch, crunch, crunch through the leaves. Like, I love that. You don't get that in California. Not in Southern California, anyway. I missed that. Or, you know, that little bit of, the little bit of nip in the air when it starts to get cold in the fall, and then you have, like, the apple cider, and you go apple picking. You don't do that in L.A. I did not like it. Anyway, that's where I was living when I was pregnant with my older daughter. Back to the fruit. So I would make this massive bowl of fruit salad, like, every day. So it would have um, maybe one of eight different kinds of fruit in it at one time. So there'd be, like, a banana and an apple and an orange and a grapefruit and a peach and a pear and a whatever. Whatever I got my hands on. So it'd be a big bowl of fruit salad because it would have, like, eight whole pieces of fruit all mixed together. So would I, like, divvy that up into bowls and have that last several days? No. No, I would not. I would sit with this big mixing bowl on my lap, pour a whole bunch of yogurt on top, sprinkle some grape nut cereal, which I just loved. I haven't had that in a while. I'd like to get that. And I would just like work my way through this whole bowl. It would take a while. And my way of thinking was, well, I'm pregnant. I can, I can eat whatever I want, right? It's fruit. It's healthy. And that is what I did. And that's when I got so very into the fruit yogurt crunchy topping combo. And no, I was not one of those pregnant people who gained like 80 pounds. I didn't. I gained like, I don't know, 30 maybe, 25, kind of a normal amount of weight to have my little 8 pound baby, even eating that massive amount of fruit. I mean, granted, it wasn't like a gigantic mixing bowl full of chocolate cake. It was fruit, but still, that's a lot of food. Ah, uh, those were the days. That was the one good thing about living in Southern California was being able to get fresh produce at these produce stands by the side of the road. So inexpensive. I remember getting, I think, four avocados for a dollar. 25 cents for an avocado. Standard price in the Northeast for an avocado is two bucks. Who can afford a freaking avocado? But I used to make my own homemade guacamole when I lived out there all the time because it was actually cheap. I made homemade salsa all the time. Um, that was good. I remember walking along with um, the father of my first child. We'd just be walking through some neighborhood, and there'd be some yard with a tree, and it's not like a maple tree or a birch tree or an oak tree like we have in the Northeast. It would be like an orange tree or an avocado tree in somebody's yard, just covered with fruit. I didn't have that in my yard. I didn't have a yard because I lived in a kind of a crappy little apartment. Um, but I just kind of thought, can't, can't I just climb up on the wall and like take an avocado? There's so many. So that would be cool, obviously, to have, you know, an avocado tree or a mango tree in your yard. Mm. But other than that, I couldn't see a huge upside to living in L.A. Very culturally weird. Very superficial. I'm not saying people in the Northeast aren't superficial. I suppose some of them are. I've known some people who are. But not to the extent of what it's like out there. We have some normal people here. Everybody there was so obsessed with like their looks and their tan and their car. and 
I don't know. It was weird. I didn't like it. It was also a rough time in my life because I was super, super poor there. Like, I think I'm poor now. I was really poor when I lived in L.A. Like, it was a big deal for us to go to Starbucks to get a Frappuccino, which is so dumb. I don't do that anymore. I like a Frappuccino, but I'm not going to waste money on that. But back then, 20 years ago, Frappuccinos were new to me. And I loved them, and they were so just, like, good and yummy and refreshing and delightful. But I didn't have money then just to go waste on a Frappuccino. So we'd have to save up. We'd have to save up spare change to go treat ourselves to a freaking Frappuccino. Decaf, obviously, because I was pregnant. Sad. I had... I had a pretty easy pregnancy with that first girl. I was 32 at the time. Um, I had a very easy, healthy pregnancy. Um, I had some morning sickness, I will say. Um, but I only threw up once. I know it's nice to sit and share a meal with someone who's going to tell you about when they threw up. I did not plan for this to be California story time, but when I lived out there, and um, I was looking for a job in social services because I'm a social worker, right? And I did finally get one. But before I found that job, my daughter's dad and I worked as extras in movies. That is not fun. Don't think that that's fun. It's really not fun. It has its upsides for people in certain circumstances, but the pay is terrible. It's not like it's hard work because you don't do anything but stand around. Boring as shit. You can't even believe how boring it is. We were making maybe six fifty an hour. I don't know if they pay minimum wage. I mean, that was 20 years ago. So you're not getting paid crap. You have to stay for the whole day. Like if you get bored and just say, I want to go home. You, don't, you can't clock out and get money for the time you were there. Like, you stay the whole day, you don't get anything. They do feed you lunch, which sometimes is pretty good, depending on what movie it is or what show or, like, how big it is. And, of course, you know I like that because I'm into food. I'm like, ooh, free lunch, money and a free lunch. Now, it was a good job for people, like for grad students, let's say, who um, need to sit around all day reading and studying because you do sit around a shitload. Um... Good job for them. And for a lot of older retirees, like these old men would sit down and like play cards all day. And I mean, when you have to stand up and go be in a scene, then you go do it. But the rest of the time, you're just sitting down. There's so much boring ass downtime. It's unreal. I would bring knitting and needlepoint to do, but like a whole day of sitting and doing that, it's just like yeah, that gets kind of boring and tiresome too. So I'm just saying. And, you know, being an extra isn't the glamorous thing that you're all thinking it is. But that's what we did. So, um, we, yeah, we were very poor out there, and it was really depressing. Now, what shows were we extras on? I'm going to tell you, because you can see me in a movie. Um, uh, the Christmas movie, Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger. We were in that. Freaking stupidest movie ever. So, basically... The plot is that there's this, um, the hot item for Christmas is the Turbo Man doll. Everybody's trying to get it. Arnold Schwarzenegger's trying to get it for his kid. You know, Sinbad, the comedian, he's trying to get it. I think he plays a mailman in this movie. So, there's this scene where a toy store is opening, and all these people come rushing in, and they're rushing around looking for the Turbo Man doll. And Arnold Schwarzenegger's there as part of that. All right, so we were in that scene. We were in the toy store scene. And... It was filmed in an actual toy store, um, a slightly north of L.A. Well, L.A. is huge. I mean, it's like all these towns put together. So, so we're at this real toy, um, toy store, and we're standing around, and we're just part of the crowd that's supposed to kind of go running through the aisles. Um, and we were on the side where Sinbad was. Now, if you're thinking, ooh, isn't that cool, a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, it's not like he's hanging out with the extras. 
It's not like you're allowed to talk to him. If you go anywhere near him, you're going to get kicked off the set. And what's really interesting, it's an interesting phenomenon when you're an extra on a movie, that the PAs, the production assistants, all these girls who are like 21, 22 years old, who I guess are trying to get into the movie business or something. I don't know what the hell they're doing there. And they're freaking bitches. High on their power as a PA with their little headsets. So they're going around bossing people around. And I was like a 32-year-old woman. I mean, granted, I was doing this shitty job, so who am I? But I was 32 years old. I already had a college degree from an Ivy League college. I already had one master's degree. I was halfway through another master's. Like, don't freaking boss me around, Brandy, or whatever. I shouldn't make fun of people's names, but, you know. Anyway, so they're bitches. And honest to God, as an extra, you are less valuable than a, a, than a head of cattle. Like, you, you are, uh, I mean, certainly if they had an animal on the set, they'd be treating it better than they treat you. They treat the extras like absolute shit. Because they're worthless. I mean, you're replaceable. You're just a body in a scene. You're nothing. It's a great way to feel like nothing. So anyway, we're in this Toy Story scene. And let me tell you, Sinbad was awesome. He is such a nice guy. I can't say Arnold Schwarzenegger isn't a nice guy. I wouldn't know, because we didn't get to associate with him. But <clears throat> we're waiting in the aisle along the side, because then we're supposed to run forward behind Sinbad. So he's standing there. And one of the other extras, um, I think this other extra's father had been Sinbad's basketball coach in high school or something. So they were talking about that. And Sinbad was really friendly, like totally nice, normal guy. Just going to say. Shout out to Sinbad. So we have our little scene running around, blah, 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 whatever. Um, I think that was three days on that shoot. So boring. So at one point, I was talking to the director of the movie. I don't know. Who am I to be talking to him? I think it was Chris Columbus. So I was like, so what's the deal? What, like, what is this movie about? So he explains it to me. I'm like, oh, it's this Christmas thing, Turbo Man doll, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, it's going to be very funny, very, very funny. And I was like, Really? Because it doesn't sound funny. I know, he didn't ask for my opinion, did he? But, you know, I'm pretty smart. I can have my opinions. I can tell you something stupid. It doesn't mean the general population isn't going to like it, but I'm telling you, the movie idea sounded pretty freaking stupid. I'm like, I'm not really seeing the humor. I'm not getting this. Oh, it's going to be very, very funny. I'm like, good luck with that. And if you've ever seen that movie, it's not that good. But if you watch that Toy Story um, scene, you do see me. There's a, a shot of Schwarzenegger, and there are crowds of people all around him, and I'm right behind him. You can, you can see me much younger, like this, but younger. Um, and I've red earmuffs on. Yeah, in Southern California, in the summer, in the heat, inside. Yeah, that, felt, that was comfy. That felt good. So anyway, yes, we were in Jingle All the Way. And when I was on Jingle All the Way, I didn't know I was pregnant yet. And I had been a vegetarian for a while, and the lunch they fed us out of the... Um, it's like a truck, like a food truck. They were grilling steaks. Like huge freaking steaks. On the bigger shoots, you don't get like a big steak. You get like, you know, like a salad bar and a sandwich or something. But they're grilling these huge steaks. And I had one. And I was like, why am I, why do I want this? I haven't had meat in years, but I must have this steak. But I didn't know I was pregnant yet. And I think it was like the, the inner pregnant me realized I am making a human being. I need protein. That was a good steak, I must say. <laughs> yeah, so there was Jingle All the Way. We also were extras in the Leave It to Beaver movie. Another top-notch piece of entertainment. We got paid extra at Leave It to Beaver because they used my car to like just drive along the street. You know, the car's worth more than me. Um, then, do you remember Boogie Nights, which I think Marky Mark is in? I know, I don't think they call him Marky Mark anymore. I think it's Mark Wahlberg, but those of us of a certain age know him as Marky Mark. So it was that movie about the porn industry, and there's a scene in it where Marky Mark is getting an award at kind of like the porn industry's Academy Award type deal. I didn't do that one. My, my daughter's father did that one. But I remember having, um, I kind of had morning sickness. And the shoot was like in the middle of the night. It was an evening deal. And I was like, I don't want to go out at night feeling sick and dress up 
like it's in the 1970s and look fat and disgusting. And you know, like that polyester fabric that dresses were made out of that was really, um, like shiny, but really clingy and not fat, fat, blah, 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 not flattering at all. Like even, even for skinny women, if you had like any little bit of a tummy, like it just looked like crap. Well, I, I wasn't skinny. I had more than a little tummy. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to be out in the middle of the night. I don't feel well. I don't want to wear like a powder blue polyester gown like I'm going to this award show. Because, you know, that's what the extras were. They were the audience at the award show. I don't want to do it. But my daughter's dad did that. So he has some good stories about that scene that he was in. It's where Marky gets his award. Um, what else did we do? Oh, we did this infomercial. The greatest love songs of the 60s, 70s, and 80s in this six CD set. Yeah. I don't know how that's an infomercial because there's no info involved. You're not learning anything. You're just buying the set of CDs. And you could see us in that. That commercial used to play late at night, and I had friends who actually saw that. I'm like, oh, my God, we saw you in this commercial. Yeah, that was me. For that one, hmm. They, um, they, they paid some really rich person to use their house overnight. So, again, that was a nighttime shoot. And basically, it's like a party around the pool. So, we're just wandering around the pool in the background, kind of dressed. I don't know how we were dressed. Nicely. With our little cups of apple juice, pretending that they're cocktails. And we're just drinking the apple juice and making conversation like, Ah, oh, for half an hour, my ha ha ha. Like, we didn't even make real conversation. We just faked it like freaking retards. Like, and then you have piece of carrot, piece of carrot. It was so dumb. But, okay, this is Southern California where it's hot, right? Not at night. Not in the middle of the night. It's freaking cold. Freaking cold. And it was like all night long. You're not allowed to go into the main house, right? They got these this, this rich person's house to use, but we're out at the pool and the patio, but you're not allowed to go in the house like to go to the bathroom or get warm. I mean, I can kind of see why. If it was my house, I might not want a bunch of weirdos coming in and using my bathroom, but still, you know, people do need to pee when they're drinking apple juice all night long. I freaking suck. I'm not saying it's the worst job in the world. Like, if it was a choice between going down in a coal mine and being extra, I would probably be an extra. But, definitely not as cool as you think it's going to be. Then, back to throwing up. The one time I threw up from morning sickness, because I was sick all the time. It wasn't morning sickness. It was morning, noon, and night all the time sickness when I was pregnant. The one time I threw up was on the set of an Alien Nation TV movie. Okay, remember, this is 20 years ago. This is the late 90s. Do you remember the show Alien Nation? So they had this TV movie. And the scene we were there for... Here, look at my food while I'm talking. The scene we were there for um, was like a political debate because one of the aliens was running for Senate, like human Senate, and he was having a debate against the human, the human candidate, right? And the alien was the good guy in this scenario. So the extras are just like the audience in this auditorium there for the debate. So that's what we're there for. Um, excuse me. I believe at this point I did know I was pregnant. I remember exactly what I was wearing. I had this really cute little... Um, beige Evan Pacone suit with like this cute little pleated skirt and because I was pregnant and I was starting to gain weight this was so freaking tight on me it was so uncomfortable sitting there like when I first put it in, on in the morning and I was standing up and sucking in my stomach I was like okay it's snug but I can handle it but as the day wore on and I wasn't standing up straight and I was like slouching and my belly was sticking out this thing was freaking cutting off circulation to the whole lower half of my body. So, anyway, there we are. Alien Nation, blah, 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 sitting there watching this scene. And then, um, I guess there's supposed to be like an assassination attempt because there's this gunshot. So we're all supposed to react to the gunshot and like jump up and run out of the auditorium. And you do it over and over and over again. It's like, isn't once enough, honestly? So anyway... We had lunch there. They always provide you the lunch, right? And I ate a lot. I mean, one, I was pregnant, and two, it's a free lunch. So I'm going to eat the freaking free lunch. You know, bring the big purse with the baggies, you know? So then all of a sudden, I started to feel sick. And I was like, no, this just isn't regular morning sickness. Like, I am sick. 
So I ran off to find a bathroom. I remember it so well. And I, I fly into this um, public bathroom, slam open the store, uh, doll to the door to the stall, like fling it open, hurl myself onto the floor right in front of the toilet. And as I am, like it's all one fluid motion, like the door's flinging open and I'm flying through it as I'm lowering myself to the floor and like the projectile vomit is like flying out. I know. Who doesn't like a good puke story? That's the only time I throw up from being pregnant though. Um, I did not feel well. So then I'm back in the auditorium being a spectator at this assassination attempt at the senatorial debate and I felt like shit. So I was not going to jump up and run out like, because I was afraid of the gunshot. Like, every time we did it over and over again and you hear the gunshot and everybody jumps up and starts to run out, I would just kind of go, ah. Like, I'm sick. Shoot me. I don't care. I feel like crap. Ah. Like, because that protects you from bullets, right? I know. The acting was amazing. So that's my career as an extra, in a nutshell. And then I got a job at a social service agency, so I didn't have to do that anymore. And then my daughter was born, and four months later we moved back to the East Coast, where life has been beautiful ever since. Why was I even talking about California? I never talk about my beautiful time in California. Probably because you can get fruit and vegetables out there cheaper. And that's the only good thing about it. You know, one know what's weird about Arnold Schwarzenegger? Okay. So for all the big stars, they have stand-ins. Um, that was a big bite. They have stand-ins, right? So the big stars don't have to stand around all the time while they're setting things up and checking the lighting and the sound and stuff. I don't know. I don't really know anything about movie production, but... So there's this guy... I guess they try to find people who are roughly the same height and shape and size of the star. There's a bug. That would make sense. So there's this guy who works at Schwarzenegger's stand-in, and he's had plastic surgery to make his face look like Arnold Schwarzenegger's. So when you see him, you know it's not Schwarzenegger because it's not quite right, but it's so freaking weird. It's like, wow, that guy's wearing like a really good Arnold Schwarzenegger mask. Like maybe this is his second cousin who kind of has a family resemblance but doesn't look quite right. Like Patrick Swayze's brother. Patrick Swayze had a brother that looked a lot like him. A lot like him. But kind of like with a squished face. And you knew it wasn't Patrick Swayze, but you could look at him and you're like, it's almost Patrick Swayze. Like they look so similar, but not quite the same. That's what this guy was like, but he'd had his face surgically altered to look kind of like Schwarzenegger so he could be like the stand-in for Arnold Schwarzenegger. Isn't that freaking weird? Like, ooh, who would do that? Well, he did that. I would not do that. You don't have to look like the person to be their stand-in. People are so bizarre out there. So freaking bizarre. Now, what movie stars did I see while I was out there? Not a ton. But yet, and I'm not like, um, I'm not into celebrities. I don't give a shit. They're not paying my bills. I don't care. I'm not impressed. And now at a certain age, I don't even know who they are. Like all the young ones. If you're under 45, I don't have a freaking clue who you are. Like that guy that Trump was tweeting about all the time. <clears throat> like, um, I know the girl's name is Kristen Stewart. She was dating some vampire guy. I don't know who they are. I know that girl's name because of Trump, but I have no freaking idea. I don't know who any of these people are. And I don't care. So I'm not really into celebrities, but when you're out there in California and you, or, or in New York City and you see someone, it's like, that's kind of cool. Like one time I saw Dustin Hoffman in New York City. Like, that was cool because that's Dustin Hoffman. So, in California, who did I see? One time I was at a mall, and I was going up the escalator, and so on the down escalator on the other side was Joanna Kearns. She was the mom from, excuse me, 
Um, yes, I'm burping. She was, the, who was Joanna Kearns? The mom from Growing Pains, maybe? She was some sitcom mom. Yeah, we didn't chat. We didn't hang out. And then I saw Marion Ross, who's the mom from Happy Days. Love her. She was in my local Armenian deli. How cool is that? And she was telling the deli people to watch Happy Days that was on Nick at Night at the time. And I was like, Marion, didn't you make enough money that, like, you don't have to push your Nick at Night show on the deli people? Like, that seemed kind of weird. But she was pretty adamant about it. She wanted viewers. Um, Martin Landau. Remember him from the original um, Mission Impossible TV show with Peter Graves? Saw him at a restaurant. That was pretty cool. Mm. Anybody else? Can't remember. Obviously Sinbad. Um, I've seen more celebrities in New York City. Just from growing up in the New York City area and going in there occasionally. Obviously people who live in New York see them all the time, I'm sure. But when I saw Dustin Hoffman, I was pretty, pretty impressed. One time, I'd gone into New York City to hang out with a friend. And, um, so I was making my way back to Port Authority to get the bus to come back to New Jersey, right? So I'm walking down, do, 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 do. And who do I see standing there but Paul Schaefer? Paul Schaefer, that's a familiar name. Who the heck was that? That was the band leader. Remember that little, I don't want to say squirrely, that's not nice. The sh not tall man who was the band leader on the David Letterman show. I believe he's Canadian. So he's just standing there on the street. And I'm like, I got to say something to him because it's Paul Schaefer. But it's not like I'm a big fan. I mean, I don't really know what to say. I'm not going to come up and be like, oh, are you Paul Schaefer? So I asked him for directions instead. I was like, excuse me, does Columbus turn into 9th Avenue? Or something like that. And he was like, oh, yeah, you just keep walking, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, thank you. I don't know. Me and Paul Schaefer. In New York, I also saw, well, I met Carly Simon. That's freaking cool. She, I don't know if she still has it. I mean, this was years ago. She had an art gallery uh, called Rivers Run. Now, if you remember the movie Working Girl with Melanie Griffith, the theme song was sung by Carly Simon, and it was this Let the Rivers Run song, which is a freaking awesome song. So then, I guess maybe from the money she earned from the song, she bought this art gallery, because it was called Rivers Run. And it featured artists all from, I want to say Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket, because um, I think that's where she lives. So I went over there with my friends, <coughs> who I was hanging out with one day in New York. We went over just to see the art gallery, and she was there. And she's so nice, and she came up and greeted us. She's really tall. Like, she's a high-waisted gal. Like, she has got long legs. Like, her waist is, she is tall, right? Super freaking friendly. Like, you know she's going to be. Like, why, that wouldn't be a surprise. You know Carly Simon is, like, a lovely, wonderful person. So she comes over, and she's like, oh, welcome to the art gallery. I'm Carly. Carly. Like, we freaking know you're Carly. Like, first name, we're on a first name basis. So I was like, well, hi, I'm Amy. And, of course, you know David and Russell. Which she didn't, but yeah, Carly Simon. That was the same day that I met Paul Schaefer, in fact. That's like a big celebrity sighting day for me in New York. Yeah! I've met a few people through my friend David, the aforementioned David of David and Russell. But David is an actor. We went to college together. Well, he is like a very talented, brilliant actor. And he does like all these Broadway shows and stuff. Like, you know, Mamma Mia? Yep, he's been in that for a long time. And I don't know if you're familiar with your... Um, I mean, Mamma Mia people know because, well, it's been all over the world, plus they made it into a movie. There's this other Broadway show. I don't know how familiar people are with it called You're in Town. I know, what a weird title. But he was, like, in the original production when that was off-Broadway, and then it went to Broadway. He was in that, right? So I've met a few well-known people through him, but they are nothing compared to him. I mean, he is the celebrity of all celebrities. Um, you know the guy who was on The Nanny, Charles, what's his name? Charles Shaughnessy? The, you know, the really cute British guy who's the guy, the father of the kids that Fran Drescher's The Nanny for? So he was in Urinetown at one point, so I got to meet him. Now, I had seen The Nanny, but I wasn't a huge fan of him because of The Nanny. I was a fan of him because he used to be on Days of Our Lives, and back when I was younger and actually watched soap operas, that was my show. 
And he played um, Shane Donovan. See, I'm like smiling and getting all excited just thinking about it. He was Shane Donovan. So to me, Shane Donovan from Days of Our Lives. And I was such a freaking dork. For someone who's not into celebrities, I acted like I was really into celebrities. Because I was, because it was Days of Our Lives. I was just like, oh my God, I'm moving to Shane Donovan. I uh, yes, and I was a grown woman. I was like probably in my 40s. I know, I know, I know. I was such a freaking moron. Because if I had acted cool and normal, you know we'd be like best friends now, right? And then, I can't even think of the guy's name. He's young, and you, everybody else, know, I'm sure knows his name. He's famous. He was in American Pie, which I have seen. Like the young boy with the dark hair. Saw him once on the street corner in New York City. Actually, I had no idea who he was. My friend David, the actor, pointed at him out and was like, Oh, there's blah, 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 blah. I have no idea what his name is. And I was like, uh-huh. And like, you know, the kid from American Pie. I'm like, oh, yeah, I saw that. And one time, I saw Chris Farley in New York. That was kind of near where Saturday Night Live was filmed, so it wasn't that surprising that you'd see him walking down the street. Who else? Who else have I seen? Mmm... One time when I was a teenager, my family went to dinner in New York at the Russian Tea Room, and Itzhak Perlman was at the next table. Do you know Itzhak Perlman? Yes, you do. He was a child prodigy. He's like a world-famous violinist. Amazing. There he was. My grandmother cited him. She was the one who recognized him. Classy lady that she is. Or was, because, you know, she died a while ago. Bye, Nana. I miss you. Loved my Nana. She was freaking hysterical. Alright, here's another celebrity connection. At one point, David, the actor David, lived in an apartment that Annette Benning had previously lived in before she married Warren Beatty. There you go. I know. Pretty impressive. Now, remember the show Northern Exposure? Which I know you all do about the, the New York doctor who had to live in Alaska for a while. Cute show. Loved it. Alright, so you know the guy who, I think he played Hollis. He owned the bar and was married to the really, really young girl. Right, the slightly older guy married to the young girl. Okay, at one point, he was in Urine Town before Charles Shaughnessy was in it. And I met him through my friend David. And then one time, I think I'd been hanging out with David in New York, and we kind of parted ways at the theater because he had to go to work. And so I was leaving and walking to get a bus back to New Jersey. So the guy, I don't know his name, but the guy who played Hollis was arriving at the theater, um, you know, to go to work because they were in the show. And I'd met him, and then, of course, I recognized him because I watched Northern Exposure. So when I passed him on the street, I wasn't even really thinking of who he was. I just recognized him. So I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going? Like, like, oh, good to see you again, acquaintance that I know, and I'm just saying hey to. And then afterwards, I realized, I don't know him. He said hi to me, too. He's really nice, but I don't know. I don't know him. I didn't know him. I'm sorry. <gasps> Ooh, I know a good one I saw. This was in um, Ireland. In 07, my family... I know, get to eating. Shut up, lady. Mm -hmm. A lot of talking for a mukbang. Um, we're like all down to mango now. Oh, it's so good. Um, I was in Ireland. The whole family went for this um, vacation. Because my father's parents emigrated to the United States from Ireland in the late 1800s. And my father... Hadn't been to Ireland, uh, I don't know, since like 1957 or something. I think it had been 50 years. And my, my dad's passed away now. I really miss him a lot. I really, really do. Dream about him all the time. But anyway, he was getting older and wanted to go back and visit Ireland again. So we did this whole family deal. My parents, my daughter and I, my brother, his wife, his kids. So we were in. Galway, I believe. We're staying at this pretty nice hotel. Far nicer than anywhere I would stay 
if I was paying, but my parents were paying. And at the hotel was staying this American actor who was in the country to do a play, I guess, for the, I don't know, that summer. And I knew he was doing the play in that town because I'd seen signs of it around town, but I didn't know he was staying at our hotel. So we met him because he was there at breakfast one morning. They had this huge breakfast spread and so freaking nice. And what is the guy's name? James Crap. Jamie Cromwell? No. Wait, is that right? Remember the movie Babe with the Talking Pig? The lovely gentleman, handsome guy, slightly older guy, who's the farmer who owns Babe the Pig? That's the guy I'm talking about. That's the actor. Such a nice guy. Very, very tall. Like, he's really tall. I took a picture of him with my daughter. So cute. Um, very nice guy. Very handsome guy. And then I think in the movie, The Queen, which is about Queen Elizabeth, I think he, pl I think he played Prince Philip in it. He's been in tons of things. Tons and tons and tons. He's a great actor. Great guy. Very exciting to meet him at breakfast at our a hotel in Ireland. That was a good one. What a fun little trip down memory lane. I'm telling you all my best celebrity sighting stories at once. All you need to do is find someone who really actually lives in LA and they're going to have plenty of these stupid stories. There are a few celebrities I've always wanted to meet because I am fan, a fan. Um, I asked my friend David, the actor, like, if you ever meet one of these guys, let me get back down here. If you ever meet one, like, call me immediately. Wherever I am, I will come flying up to up to the city. Um, and those are Barry Manilow. I don't care what people think. I know he has a lot of fans, so you might be saying, like, yeah, I love Barry too. But I know, like, people my daughter's age are like, oh, you're so queer, Mom. Nah, nah, nah. I love Barry Manilow. Freaking adore him. And I have ever since I was about 12 or 13. Love him. Oh, my God. Love him. Love Barry. Would love to meet him. I don't know why my friend David would ever meet. See, I did drop food. I dropped a chunk of granola on my foot. I don't know why David would ever, you know, necessarily be in the company of Barry Manilow, but if he is, I would like to know. Another one I really like to meet is Hank Azaria. I love him. I, I, I kind of have the sense that he might, he might not be that nice a guy in real life, which would be really kind of sad and disappointing because I kind of feel like we should be best friends. But I just love him. I think he's just such a talented actor, and I love, like, all the accents and stuff he can do. I love accents. So Hank Azaria, Barry Manilow, who else? I would love to meet Meatloaf. You know the singer, Meatloaf? <sighs> he and I totally should be best friends. Like, totally love, worship, and adore him. And he should be my best friend. And I would cook really good food for him. I even have an idea for a TV show they should make with Meatloaf in it. Like, I've got this whole elaborate idea that would be awesome for him which maybe I'll tell you about in another video. Um, yeah, yeah, love him. I'm trying to think who else was on my list of people like I really, 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 really would love to meet. Well, obviously, Colin Firth. Like, who doesn't want to meet Colin Firth? Like, are you kidding? Mr. Darcy? And Mr. Darcy again? Like, Jesus, I love him. I rambled on so long, the maximum recording time was reached. And now I'm starting over. I don't even know where it cut out. But I was talking about celebrities I would like to meet. So you got your Barry Manilow, your Hank Azaria, Meatloaf, of course, Ricky Gervais, and Stephen Merchant. Have you guys seen the show? I think it might be an HBO show with Stephen Merchant in it, starring in it. It's his show. 
called Hello Ladies. Maybe you've all seen it. Maybe it was really well known. I don't know. I'm out of the loop for everything because I don't have cable. I have to get everything on Netflix like way after the fact. But that's like one of the funniest shows I have ever seen. And he's like the most sweet and endearing and funny and wonderful and brilliant person and character. And oh my god, it is such a great show. And Ricky Gervais, I just love. Speaking of being an extra, if you haven't seen Extras with Ricky Gervais, oh my god, that is a freaking funny show. God, I love that show. It's just great. I would like to meet pretty much anybody from Arrested Development. I love that show. But the guy who plays Buster, I don't know his real name. You all know who he is. He's on Veep now with Julia Louis-Dreyfus. He is so freaking funny. Mm-mm-mm. longest time I've ever taken to eat a meal. We're very fast eaters in my family, but all the chit chat has slowed me down. We're almost done. Just a few chunks of mango left. And given how late I started breakfast, I'm thinking, this is brunch today. Because lunch, if I was going to eat lunch on time, that would be like in half an hour. I don't get about the mukbangs. Mukbang, I know, what a good pronunciation. Mukbang. I don't get is you have all these channels with people eating these vast quantities of really unhealthy food. Like you'll have the KFC mukbang or the Taco Bell mukbang. And some of them have like regular sized people. Some of them have very, very, very morbidly obese people eating this massive amount of food. And they have many, many thousands of subscribers and watchers. Okay, fine. You want to see a big person eat a lot of food? That's what you want to see. But then the people leave these really mean comments. That's what I get. If you don't want to watch a big gal eating a whole bunch of, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken, then don't watch it. Why watch it just to say something mean and critical? Like, I don't know if people... Ugh, I'm sorry. Burp, burp, burp. How rude. I don't know if people don't think that um, the people who make the videos like have no feelings and don't care about the comments. I guess some people don't care, but I think they're hurtful. I, I think the people who make the videos read the comments, and it's like being in junior high again. Like, oh, why am I being picked on? Of course, they're laughing their way to the bank, right? Because if you have hundreds of thousands of viewers, you've got to be making some money there. But I just see no reason to spread the negativity and be mean like that. I mean, it seems like so many people watch just because they want to make a mean comment and call a person disgusting. If they're disgusting, you don't watch them, right? I don't get that whole troll phenomenon. I really don't understand it. With the mukbang, I don't really understand. And tell me. Do tell. Is the fascination with watching another person eat? Or is it because of the breakdown of the nuclear family structure and how we don't have family meals together and we don't have connections over food, like eating with somebody is a very powerful bonding experience. It's why you break bread with people. It's biblical. Um, we don't have that now, so people are craving that, so they just want to sit and have a cup of coffee and watch someone eat. And Is that why? I don't totally understand it. I'm thinking if you're watching a 400-pound person pack away enough Kentucky Fried Chicken to feed 10, that's not because you want to feel like you're having a family meal with them. That's like kind of freak show voyeurism, I guess. Which I don't think is very nice. It's not nice because nobody's a freak. Except I call my husband a freak all the time. So 
So, I hope you all are having a good day. Hope you're all eating some healthy fruits and vegetables. Don't waste your money on fast food like Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, it's a waste of money. Not good for you. I'm not going to tell you it doesn't taste good. I'm just going to say, not good for you and it's a waste of money. Well, it's a beautiful day. I need to get outside, get something done, run around with the kids, get some gardening done. Summer will soon be gone. Enjoy it while you can. Last bite. This is so good. All gone. Yum, 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 yum. I could eat another bowl of that right now. All right, so thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed story time with Amy. And um, I hope you're inspired to eat some fabulous fruit salad now. And I'll catch you later.